Hi there, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another card making video. Today I'm going to be creating a set of three birthday themed cards featuring brand new products from the My Favorite Things January 2023 release. Oh my goodness, you guys. I knew when I saw these products that I could not wait to use them. I love a good background text background stamp. You already know this. This little XOXO is going to be my new favorite. And then the typewriter dies. Anytime there are fun dies that you can build sweet little images or scenes, I am here for it. So I'm actually going to start by building some backgrounds and I am going to create more backgrounds than what I'm going to use in this video. The two backgrounds I don't use, I'm going to use going to be using in a different video, so stay tuned for that. But I have my XOXO background in my Misty. I've removed the foam mat from the Misty to use with a cling stamp, and I'm using some of my favorite Distress Oxide inks from Tim Holtz to ink up all of these awesome backgrounds. We're using Lumberjack Plaid, Saltwater Taffy, Kitsch Flamingo, Salvage Patina, and Speckled Egg. Definitely that Valentine's-y type vibe uh, with my color choices. And I'm simply going to stamp each of these and then clean my stamp and move on to the next panel. So the first one I accidentally double stamped. For some reason, I have been having a ton of trouble doing that lately. Even in the Misty, that's user error, <laughs> uh, nothing else. And we're going to just, again, replace with the next sheet. I am using four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels for all of my cards today, meaning that the background is gonna go from side to side. Now, I could have cut these down after I inked them or after I stamped them, or before, but I opted to kind of leave them big. You'll see why here in a minute. I'm gonna do some added or some distressing over the stamping um, with a little tone on tone distressing. And I just felt like the bigger background kind of showcased that a little bit better. I'm loving these colors together. I think it would be fun to probably do um, a card with these colors. So kind of stay tuned for that as well, because I think these are really fun. <laughs> uh, it's a fun color combination. The saltwater taffy I sometimes forget about, and it's a great color. Don't really know why I forget, because it's amazing. Now, the sticky mats in the Misty, I've had a couple questions about those. When you're using them to hold on to your cardstock, when you don't want to put it in the upper corner, and because I want the entire panel to be covered, I place it a little further down and those sticky mats hold on to it. But there is going to be some over stamping where the ink on the stamp obviously stamps onto the sticky mat. I have found I just run it under some warm water and then I set it in a drying rack. I don't scrub it or anything like that. If it stains, it stains, but that will wipe away any of that remaining ink that is sitting on top of the, um, on top of the sticky mat. And I completely stamped that one terrible too. I was on a real roll here. Once we're done with this, I am going to grab my plastic box that I use for splatter. Um, I do get lots and lots of questions about my plastic box. It is simply a plastic storage box. Uh, mine is from Walmart. You can get them almost anywhere. Mine is the shallow one, and I use this because it washes out clean. So when I am spraying liquid anything or using gouache for splatter or paint splatter, or even water splatter that you don't want to get everywhere. A plastic box is just, I actually had one setting um, aside one day and I needed a splatter box and I thought, oh, I'll just use this and rinse it out. And once I had done that, I thought, why do I not do this all the time? Because it just seems to make so much sense. So that is what I use. It is not a specific, you know, paper crafting type product. It is just a plastic storage box that you can get at pretty much any discount or dollar store. 
Look at that color combination. Isn't that fun? So this is my plastic box. You can see I have not even wiped it out since the last time I used gouache. I am going to splatter two backgrounds with this first spray. I'm gonna spray the Lumberjack Plaid and the Saltwater Taffy with Saltwater Taffy Distress Oxide ink. Why am I doing that on the Lumberjack Plaid, you might ask? Well, I did a splatter card a few weeks ago and I used Lumberjack Plaid, but it looks like blood splatter, and I decided I didn't wanna do that today. So the pink over the red, not exactly tone on tone, but I like it a lot better. I like the red text of the XOXO, but the saltwater taffy looks amazing. And then for the rest of these, I am simply using tone on tone. So this is salvage patina. You can see I accidentally made a huge splotch um, when I sprayed it, but that's okay. Don't worry about those things that might seem like mistakes because I promise when it's dry, we're adding stuff on top of the card. It's probably gonna cover up the fact that I just literally saturated that panel with a big blob of salvage patina distress oxide ink. Next, I did die cut lots of sheets of paper that are gonna come out of the typewriter using the typewriter die. And I am going to use greetings from the two stamp sets that coordinate with this. And we're gonna stamp a whole bunch of sheets of paper. Um, I'm gonna use different sentiments. You can definitely use whatever you like here, but I am mixing and matching sentiments from the two stamp sets to work. One is more love themed. So if you're gonna make some love or Valentine's type of cards, I think that would be great. I think I did pull one greeting from that. I'm trying to decide. I think I used, oh, I used two. On the red background card, I used I love you, I loved you before autocorrect was a thing. And I like, which has a strike through, and it says, I love you. Uh, those two are from the Love typewriter set. Everything else is from the other set, which is not just birthday themed. I know I made birthday cards, but it is very much, uh, there's some thank yous and friendship and things like that. So it, it could work for lots of different occasions. And that's this set right here. And I'm going to work on stamping just different greetings. I did end up stamping a lot of extra greetings later on. I had originally only done one sheet of paper per card, but as I am assembling the first typewriter, I really kind of see where some of the quote unquote holes in my design are. And I decided a few extra greetings, a few extra sheets of paper would be kind of cute. So that's what we're going to do. From another new stamp set from the release is this lip. I'm not using very much from it. I do think some of the greetings would fit the sheet of paper if you wanna do something a little different, but it has this teeny tiny heart and I'm here for it. I love that little heart. So I'm gonna just stamp that with Lumberjack Plaid um, at the bottom of each. And we're going to assemble the typewriter. I will say there's lots of little pieces here. And so that's the most time consuming part of this entire design is die cutting everything and then assembling it. So hopefully by showing the assembly process, which I'm only going to do, uh, assemble, pardon me, one of them on camera today just to save time. I hope that kind of shows you. I've got some guava cardstock from Lawn Fawn. This is for the saltwater taffy background. Then I've got some slate cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. The bars and then the rollers on the typewriter, that's some matte silver cardstock. And I will say that I originally had just obviously put the one sheet of paper in. I will have to get creative with trimming and kind of tucking the other sheet of paper into my design here in a minute. Tweezers are going to be your best friend um, or and or an an embellishment wand. And I am simply kind of starting by building. Now there's layering pieces for like the little rollers and things. That is out of some black gloss cardstock. The sides, um, you know, the turning knobs, those are going to be black gloss cardstock. And then the return bar is going to be silver metallic cardstock. And believe it or not, 
you can definitely see the black rollers on the silver. I think it really is a great touch. Um, there's even a little piece that goes here um, where the keys would come up and strike. And then for the keyboard, I die cut it from two colors of cardstock and then I'm just gonna use another color to die cut that again and inlay all of the keys. Is that extra? It sort of is, but the pieces aren't as small as one might think. And it really was super quick and easy to do. And I think it gives you a much cuter um, typewriter. Isn't that fun? I just love this typewriter. I think it's the cutest thing. And I love that it has all the layering pieces. I personally think it just gives it so, more, so much more depth and dimension. Now this is a birthday card and even though the greetings definitely have a typewriter look and feel to them, I thought it would be cute to add a little cupcake and then in, the, in that same set with the cake and the cupcake, there are some strawberries and I just added those kind of around, uh, one next to the cupcake and a couple more next to the typewriter really just adding to the birthday feel of the design. The keyboard, I die cut from Schoolhouse Red, Simon Says Stamp Card Stock, and then all of the keys for the typewriter were die cut from Hero Arts Peony Card Stock, which is my favorite color of pink card stock. And I love the three different shades on this. So even though it's a monochromatic style card, there's a little touch of red on here, as you can see, and then um, lots of silver accents and whatnot. And then the little greenery of the stems that we'll add here in a minute, add to the overall look and feel of the finished design. The embellishment wand, I just pulled my entire cutting plate over right next to where I was working and then picked up each of the keys and put them in place. So hopefully you see how easy that is to do. And I totally forgot to add the little return bar here. So I am just going to, uh, or the, I don't, I don't know the exact name of that. I'm probably calling it the right, wrong thing. You guys, do you even remember, I know a lot of you probably do, uh, typing reports on typewriters. I know I did um, in middle school and in high school. Um, <laughs> so it's just so funny. My kids look at me like I'm talking Greek. <laughs> no, we do that on a computer and print it out. Uh, white out, does anyone remember white out? In fact, it's funny, I bought a typewriter here at the end of last year to use in my planning. Um, it's a We Are Memory Keepers typewriter, and it's definitely not as perfect. I wish I had the vintage typewriter that we had uh, when I was growing up. My mom actually had another typewriter that, that I used for like reports and things, and she used for, for work. But I we had a vintage one, and I loved that thing. In fact, I should ask her. I'm sure she doesn't have it anymore, um, but I loved it. It's a bummer that I didn't think to keep that. I'm sure we don't have it. My mom is not sentimental. She does not hold on to things like that. <laughs> we had it for a long, long time, but I, I, I haven't seen it in uh, 25 years. It's funny, the things that you think of so long after the fact that you are, are like, wonder if we still have that. I would love to have it. I did use some alcohol ink markers. These are Olo markers because I felt like my frosting was a little dull and one dimensional and I wanted it to have kind of more of that variegated effect. I also made a vanilla cupcake. Fun fact, I do not like chocolate cupcakes. I don't really like chocolate cake. I love chocolate, but not in cake form. Isn't that funny? Um, I love white, uh, white cupcakes. I don't eat them but anymore, but not really, not very often, but I love them. So that was my my vanilla cupcake with my pink frosting. And then I wanted it to look sugared. So I used a Stardust glitter pen to add some little speckles here and there. So it looks a little sugared. I don't know if on the video it shows, but in real life, it looks really, really cute. 
And then we're gonna tuck a couple of the strawberries over here. And you can see, I still only have one sheet of paper in the typewriter and it's cute. I just felt like I had a lot of dead space, I guess, on my card. Um, and then I pulled this up. My first, my first card is always what I call my tester card when I am making more than one. So I liked kind of leaving in some of the, oh, this worked and this did not type steps. Um, so you can see part of my die cut pulled off and because it stuck to the, the uh, sticky foam dots, it really wasn't gonna stick anymore. So I just put glue on top of it because I didn't wanna tear them off or anything like that. And I love the splatters all over the text background. This is another one. I know I've mentioned this lots of times in my videos that if you're looking to just make some backgrounds, like you're wanting to be creative, but you're having a hard time, make backgrounds. Make these in all colors and have them on hand because it's gonna work with a lot of different kinds of cards. Um, you could use any kind of text background and do them in the whole rainbow of colors, splatter them with your splatter inks or other kind of things and really have some fun. And then you have bunches of backgrounds ready to go for the next time that you're inspired to create. So this is what I was talking about. Um, I'm having to, I did have to pull that foam off and I am showing this because I wanted you to see how this very, this came together and it didn't come together super smooth. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but I ended up absolutely loving the finished design. So I just replaced that foam tape there, but I pulled it off because I wanted things to lay nicely. And I love how it looks like, you know, there was one sheet of paper and you pulled it out, but it's still laying there. And then you're, you're typing up the second one. And then we're going to end up adding another one down at the bottom. I tried to do a couple of different things, but I think another little sheet of paper is going to be the best. So once I had the basic design down, once I had fiddled with this card design, I, and had this one put together, the other cards came together so easily. Um, you can see, I did have to tear off. I had, I'd done a sentiment strip and it just looked out of place. It didn't work. Um, and I thought another sheet of paper would be cuter. Like, you know, you're, you're trying to find just the right thing to say. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, and, I'm gonna put that on the front of a card base and I'm good to go. And here is a look at all three finished cards. I love doing the same design in multiple colors, especially it is great and a time saver while you have ever everything out, go ahead and make more than one. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these three typewriter cards featuring brand new products from My Favorite Things. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There's exclusive content. You'll receive a handmade birthday card from me during your birthday month monthly lives for my top tier patrons, and more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you're always notified when I have a video or go live. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again next time.